हेलो टू एवरी वन सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू हेव ए लेवंथ लेक्चर ऑन न्यूमेरिकल इन राजबर एंड अप्लीकेशन लेट अस रिकॉल क्विकली व्हाट वी डिड इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी डिड द आइगन वैल्यूज एंड आइगन फंक्शंस हाउ दे आर एसोसिएटेड विद द मैट्रिक सॉल्यूशंस टुडे वी वुड बी डूइंग ए वेरी स्पेशलाइज्ड थ्योरम कॉल्ड gergorin disk theorem there is a very speciality of this gergorin's disk theorem how actually the eigen values in continuation to the previous lecture how the eigen values of a can be found as the union of a disk this is very very important theorem and uh, let us state formally what is this gergorin disk theorem let a is equal to a i j n by n right a i j i thro j th column of n by n square matrix now let us define r i will be equivalent to summation j is equal to 1 to n i not equal to j i not equal to j right that means those elements which are not in the principal diagonal mod of aij mod of aij so for i is equal to 1 to n then each eigen value lambda of a right this eigen value lambda of a satisfies at least one of the following inequalities satisfies at least one of the inequalities what is this inequality mod of lambda minus a i j less than or equal to r i for i is equal to 1 to n right i is equal to 1 to n in other words we can also tell that all the eigen values of a can be found in the union of this that is z such that mod of z minus aij mod of z minus aij less than or equal to ri for i is equal to 1 to n so the gregorian theorem will state that the eigen values lie in the disk unit disk such that lambda minus aij less than or equal to ri this is the speciality of the gregorian disk theorem okay let's see how we can prove this gregorian disk theorem in order to prove this gregorian disk theorem let us start with let a be an eigen value of matrix a and x be an eigen vector associated with lambda i then a x is equal to lambda x we need to find out the values of lambda and the values of x such that a x is equal to lambda x x bits a solution this lambda is called eigen values as we see and x is the eigen vector eigen vector right so let lambda be an eigen value of a and x be an eigen vector associated with lambda then for each a x is equal to lambda x so we write this as lambda minus a i i x i lambda minus a i x i will be equivalent to summation j is equal to 1 to n summation j is equal to 1 to n i not equal to j a i j x i j a i j x j for every i is equal to 1 to n so as you see here where x i is the ith component of x x i is the ith component of x then since mod of x j upon x k this is less than or equal to 1 for every j not equal to k then we will have absolute value of lambda minus a k k absolute value of lambda minus a k k less than or equal to summation j is equal to 1 j not equal to k 
mod of a i j times of mod of x j upon mod of x k less than or equal to summation j is equal to 1 to n j not equal to k mod of a i j. Thus, lambda is contained in the disk. Thus, lambda is contained in the disk lambda minus a k k less than or equal to r k less than or equal to r k k right. So, essentially the Gregorian theorem will says that if you find out a small union of the disk and the difference between lambda minus a k. So, lambda is the eigenvalue and a k k is the, the principal diagonal value and this absolute value of this mod of a minus k k k should be less than or equal to summation j is equal to 1 j not equal to k and mod of a k i right mod of a k j mod of x j upon mod of x k less than or equal to summation j is equal to 1 to n j not equal to k a i j. So, in essence, we would be getting it as, we would be getting it as, we would be getting it as the value of lambda, right? The value of lambda, it contains in the disk mod of a minus lambda minus a k k less than or equal to r k, right? So, that means essentially we wanted to see the difference between the principal diagonal and the eigenvalue, right? This should be less than or equal to Rk, right? So, that is how we do prove the Gregorian theorem. Well, let us go with the simple examples. Let us see the disk. If you talk about the disk, that is Ri is equal to Z such that absolute value of z minus a i i less than or equal to r i for i is equal to 1 to etc n are called Gregorian disks in the complex plane where z is the complex number where z is a complex. So, z is in the form of x plus i y right you know x is the the real real z and y is the imaginary of z in the complex plane, in the complex plane. Okay, so let us start with simple example. I take this 3 by 3 matrix. I take 3 by 3 matrix 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 9, 1, 1, 1. So, what are the eigenvalues of this matrix? So, eigenvalues of this matrix, I can write it as eigenvalues of this matrix, I can write it as absolute value of a minus lambda i3 will be equal to 0. a minus lambda i3 will be equal to 0. So, if I do this, I do get as lambda 1 is equal to 7.3067 lambda 2 is equal to minus 0.6533 plus or minus 0.3473 i. Look at this, this is a real value and this is the imaginary value. So, you know very well the imaginary values always they do occur in pairs pairs. That means x plus i y is a root necessarily x minus i y is also root. So, that means there is a one real and two imaginary roots. Right? Now, if you look at very closely, what is r 1? r 1 is equal to 5. r 2 is equal to 12 r3 is equal to 2. Now, you look at this. Now, you look at this lambda minus a i i that is 
let's say the eigen value is 7.30 7.3067 minus AII1. So this will be anyway. So you get it as 6.3066 less than or equal to R15. This is violating the condition, right? 6.311 is not actually less than or equal to 5. In fact, it would be greater than 5. But 6.3067 is less than 12 less than 12. So, we can find out the Gregorian disk in the following way. R1 is equal to the Z such that Z such that mod of Z minus 1 is less than or equal to 5. Right? R1 is equal to Z such that mod of Z minus 1 less than or equal to 5. And similarly, we can write Z2 as Similarly, we can write Z2 as Z of 2, Z of 2 is equal to, that is, I mean, uh, yes, for the second. So, we can write it as R2 is equal to Z such that mod of Z minus 4 less than or equal to 12. Z such that Z minus 4 less than or equal to 12. Similarly, for R3, we can write it as Z such that mod of Z minus 1 less than or equal to 2. Right? So, what is R1 as? Let me write R1 as well. R1 is Z such that mod of Z minus 1, mod of Z minus 1 less than or equal to 5. Right? Mod of Z minus 1 less than or equal to 5 mod of z minus 4 less than or equal to 12, mod of z minus 3, z minus 1 less than or equal to 2, right? 3 we have computed by using what you call Gregorian theorem. Well, let me draw a conclusion for this example. Right. Let me draw a conclusion for this example. Look at this. I would write it as. So, this is the RE and this is the imaginary. This is RE and this is imaginary. So, this is the one I call it as a R2. This is the one I call it as R1 and this is the one which I call it as R3. Right. So, look at over here, R1 is 5. So, Z minus 1 is less than or equal to 5. Z minus 4 less than or equal to 12. Right. And R2 is a bigger, that is fine. And Z minus 1 less than, so R3 is inside, R1 is here. So, this is R2 and this is R1 and this is R of 3. This is R of 3. So, essentially, the competition shows that the eigenvalues of a lie in the union of n gets more in this. That is, the eigenvalues of a lies in the union of n gets more in this. Well, having had this eigenvalues, how they do lie in the Gregorian disk, we will further go ahead how the eigenvalues will make the bounds and what are the criteria in terms of matrix norms, how they do influence the eigenvalues and eigenspace or a physical systems. Let us start with eigenbounds and matrix norms. Simple matrix norm can also go bounds for the eigenvalues. How we could able to find out the bounds for the eigenvalues? We will have a theorem. The theorem says, let lambda be an eigenvalue of A, then for any constant pair of matrix vector norms, 
mod of lambda is less than or equal to norm of a right let lambda be an eigen value of a then let lambda be an eigen value of a then for any constant pair of matrix vector norms then for any constant pair of matrix vector norms mod of lambda less than or equal to norm of a in particular in particular the spectral radius of a in particular the spectral radius of a that is largest eigen value in magnitude is bounded by that is rho of a less than or equal to norm of a this is what is called spectral radius this is what is called spectral radius right so so for any matrix vector so we will have the mod of lambda is less than or equal to norm of a so in particular we also do have the spectral radius which will govern the the stability of the matrix systems so let us start with the proof how the proof goes let us look at ax is equal to lambda x so i will have the system ax is equal to lambda x okay so let us start with the proof form from ax is equal to lambda x so lambda is the coefficient matrix and uh, okay so let us start with the system ax is equal to lambda x so a is the coefficient matrix a is the coefficient matrix lambda is the corresponding eigen vector so if you do have a lambda of x will be equivalent to that is norm of ax less than or equal to norm of a times of norm of x or else we can write it as we can write it as norm mod of lambda times of norm of x less than or equal to norm of a norm of x so we would make a conclusion that that is mod of lambda norm of a mod of lambda times of norm of a so we can easily prove that the the mod of lambda x is less than or equal to less than or equal to norm of a times of norm of x so this will complete the proof of this mod of lambda less than or equal to norm of a okay so in continuation to that let us see some generalization of this theorem so what is the generalization of this theorem so generalization of this theorem is rho of a is less than or equal to minimum of max of i summation j is equal to 1 to n mod of a i j so maximum of j summation i is equal to 1 to n a i j okay so we can make a conclusion that the spectral radius this is the spectral radius is less than or equal to minimum of minimum of max of i j is equal to 1 to n a j or max of j i is equal to 1 to n mod of a j so either one you compute it and minimum of that will be the less than or equal to rho of a this is what we call it as a spectral radius so spectral radius will give you the stability of the matrices right spectral radius will give you the stability of the matrices how the matrices would help us in order to find out a solution to the systems ax is equal to lambda x as we already discussed in the previous lecture okay so in continuation to that let us further go ahead with the what we call a specialized method what we call the power method how do you find out the maximum eigen values and minimum eigen values so this strategy would help us in order to find out maximum and minimum eigen values for a system 
x is equal to lambda x. Classical method for finding the dominant eigenvalues of a matrix and corresponding eigenvectors of a matrix. So, what is the dominant eigenvalue? What is the maximum eigenvalue? Right? So, once you know the maximum eigenvalue, and uh, inverse of that matrix will give you the minimum eigenvalue. It is a it is a corollary. We will have a theorem, but for the time being, let us stick ourselves to the dominant eigenvalue. So, these methods are very much suitable for sparse matrices because they rely on matrix multiplication only. So, what is the sparse matrix here? So, you do have a sparse matrix. In essence, that is the zero entries, zero entries are dominant. Dominant. That is why it is a sparse matrix. So a matrix is said to be a dense if non-zeros are dominant. So finding out a solution to the dense matrix is very difficult. But fortunately, we do have a, a sparse matrix. Right? We do have a sparse matrices. That means zeros are dominant. Zero elements are dominant. Because they are really on the matrix multiplication only. Okay. So let us look at mostly and widely used in applications of power method is it's used in computing the page rank of the Google matrix. Right? I mean, see all of you these days know very well about the World Wide Web Internet, right? It's a real-time internet. So, there will be a number of people accessing the Google matrix and there would be a page rank, priority, portability, credibility, right? So, in those cases, we use quite often the what we call power method. So, power method essentially will give you the dominant eigenvalues. By knowing the dominant eigenvalue, we can use in the Google matrix of the page rank in the World Wide Web and so on and so forth. The page rank is an eigenvector of the Google matrix, right? The power method is the, the power method is for finding the dominant eigenvalue and the corresponding eigenvector of a matrix, right? Dominant eigenvalue and the corresponding eigenvector of a matrix. It is so normed because it is based on implicit construction of the power of A. So it is based on implicit construction, implicit construction of the power of A. So the method is used for finding dominant eigenvalue and the corresponding eigenvectors of matrix. It is so normed because it is based on implicit construction of the power of A. So the page rank is an eigenvector of the Google matrix. And we can use to measure the relative importance of each event of a hyperlink. So we have a what you call HP hypertext HTML main long ways for making the pages, page browsers. In those cases, quite often we use it. Right? So again, let me make a remark over here. The power method is used for dominant eigenvalues of the corresponding eigenvector of a matrix. It is so normed because it is based on the implicit construction of the power of A. Right? That is the basic idea of the, this method. Well, well, let us make a conclusion. Let the eigenvalues of lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda of A be such that let us say the eigenvalues are marked in this direction. Mod of lambda 1 greater than mod of lambda 2. This is greater than or equal to lambda of 3. Like that you do have greater than or equal to lambda of n. That is lambda 1 is the dominant eigenvalue of A. Right? Lambda 1 is the dominant eigenvalue of A. Let V1 be the corresponding eigenvector. Right? Lambda 1 is the dominant eigenvalue of A and V1 will be the corresponding eigenvector. Right? Lambda 1 is the dominant eigenvalue of A and V1 will be the corresponding eigenvector. So, if this is the corresponding eigenvector, let maximum of G denote the element of maximum modulus of the vector. Right? 
so i write this as maximum of j denote so this will be maximum modulus max modulus modulus of the vector right so let maximum of g denote the element of maximum modulus of the vector g well the algorithm goes in the following fashion so you have a input n by n square matrix n by n square matrix right you have a matrix n by n square matrix what is the output approximately dominant eigen value and the corresponding eigen vector i mean which we wanted to compute approximate di dominant eigen value and corresponding eigen vector so let us start with step 1 what is the step 1 choose x not an initial vector approximation to the vector so let us start with x not that is x of 0 is the initial approximation so initially i don't have any input i will start it arbitrarily right because it is an iterative process so in the step 2 what i do is for k is equal to 1 2 3 etc i will be computing x k cap x k cap is nothing but a x k minus 1 and i would normalize this vector by using this strategy xk cap upon maximum of xk cap is the normalization vector so i will end the slope right i will end this slope right so this example will say states that if you have an approximate eigen value but the question is how do you choose x not it is a very tricky let us take with simple example all right let us start with a vector the matrix vector 1 2 3 2 3 4 3 4 the one which we did it in the previous case and let us start with x not as 1 1 1 so if nothing is known to me i would be starting this 1 1 1 all right i mean uh, the x not i will start it as 1 1 1 if nothing is known to me i will start with 1 1 1 so the eigen values of a are what are the eigen values of a so if you do what we call a minus lambda i determinant is equal to 0 so if you do this a minus lambda i determinant is equal to 0 you get the eigen value sir 0 one eigen value minus of 0.6235 is another eigen value and another eigen value you get as 9.6235 so three distinct eigen values you do get it and when you normalize this by using the previous formula i just we spoke right when you normalize this vector so you do get as point 3851 that is the one point 5595 that is the one and third one is point 7339 third one so you do get this normalized eigen vectors now i will execute the algorithm which we spoke over here for k is equal to 1 k is equal to 2 k is equal to 3 like that iteratively i do it okay so which is an iterative process so iteratively i do it iterative process so for k is equal to 1 what would happen let's see that k is equal to 1 so k is equal to 1 x cap is equal to ax not so this will become 6 9 12 and max of x1 is nothing but out of this is 12 that is known to me so when i normalize this x1 x1 by max of x1 so 6 by 12 that is 0.5 9 by 12 that is 0.75 12 by 12 that is 1 so i do get this x1 right i do get this x1 now let us go ahead further so when k is equal to 2 x2 cap is ax1 that is 0.5 5.00 7.25 9.0 maximum of this is equal to 9.50 so x2 cap i would get as point this is 5 divided by 9.5 7.25 divided by 9 9.50 divided by 9.50 which is 1 so i do get this value x2 let me go for k is equal to 3 so x2 cap is nothing but ax2 which is equal to 5.0526 7.3421 9.6316 and maximum of this will be 
and x3 is equal to you get 0.5246, 7623 and 1. So you have got this, you have got this uh, k is equal to 1, you did it, k is equal to 2, you did it, k is equal to 3, you did it. So it is a iterative process. So you can do similarly for k is equal to 4. Further improvement you can note down. k is equal to 5, you can see that. k is equal to 6, you can see that. So, like that you can do and uh, you do get what you call the better approximation, right. So, in the course of time, your approximation should become better and better so that you could able to get the best approximation. Now, the question is, general question do arises after having had this discussion, how do you ensure that the method will have a convergence? What is the convergence criteria of the power method? Well, the rate of convergence of power method is determined by the ratio lambda 2 by lambda 1. You see here mod of lambda 2 upon lambda of 1, this ratio. Now, when you consider this, the norm of x of k minus alpha 1 v1. So, that will be alpha 2 times of lambda 2 upon lambda 1, this one into v2 plus etc, etc, like this. Lambda 2, so you can apply this, ultimately you end up with lambda 2 upon lambda 1 for k is. So, the mod of alpha 2 v2, like that it goes. So, since we have lambda i is less, lambda i upon lambda 1 is less than or equal to alpha times of lambda 2 upon lambda 1, for every i is equal to 1 to n, then we will have the, the norm of, the, the norm of x of k minus alpha 1 v1 is less than or equal to alpha times of lambda 2 upon lambda 1 whole power k, k is equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. So, this is clearly shows that the rate at which x k approaches alpha v1 depends upon how fast this value goes to 0. That means the absolute value of lambda 2 by lambda 1 over power k, how it approaches to 0. So, therefore, the idea is, it's a, in order to prove this, it depends upon the, the ratio lambda 2, lambda i upon lambda 2 for i is equal to 1 to etc. So, how it fast goes to 0. This will tell you the power method is the converges. Power method is converges. So, therefore, the interesting topic is that the power method used is a convergent and uh, it will have a stable also, we will see at a later stage to find out the dominant eigenvalue of a matrix X. Right? The matrix would be away, would be arising from the system Ax is equal to lambda x. Now, let us see little changes, power method with shift. So, if you have a shift, what would be the final form of this method, how it gets converges? In some cases, convergence can be significantly improved by using a suitable shift. Thus, if lambda is, sigma is a suitable shift so that lambda 1 minus a is the denominator, the dominant eigenvalues. Right, lambda 1 minus sigma is the dominant eigenvalue of A, then the rate of convergence will be determined by the rate of, so you will have a, instead of lambda 2 by lambda 1, you will have lambda 2 minus A upon lambda 1 minus A, rather than simply lambda 2 by lambda 1. So, by choosing lambda sigma approximately, the ratio lambda 2 minus A upon lambda 1 minus A can be made, significantly made smaller than this value, thus yielding the faster convergence. That means, by using the small shift, we could able to make this uh, method much more faster than what we do expect, right, okay. Now, after having had this discussion, surprisingly, you may ask a question, why do you are interested in the dominant eigenvalue? Why are you not interested in the smallest value? So, well, the smallest value in order to find out, we will have what we call the inverse power method. So, the algorithm goes like this. An approximation sigma to the real eigenvalue of lambda such that lambda 1 minus a is less than or equal to lambda 1 minus sigma. So, mod of lambda i minus sigma less than or equal, less than, less than or equal to lambda 1 minus sigma for every i not equal to 1. So, essentially error tolerance that is epsilon maximum number of iterations n. An initial approximation x0 of the vector, so you can find out what you call the power method. So, essentially same algorithm, you can use it and instead of uh, using the matrix, you try to find out the inverse of the matrix 
for the matrix which you so obtained you can use what you call the power method so that you could able to get the smallest eigen value instead of dominant eigen value of the matrix well what is the algorithm goes in this case an approximation x k to the eigen values of the corresponding eigen vector sigma now let us choose x not so as we choose an x not is arbitrarily 1 1 1 transpose now for k is equal to 1 to n solve a minus sigma i so a minus sigma i operating on x k is equal to x k minus 1 so compute it every time x of k is equal to x of k cap divided by norm of x of k cap into 2. So stop it if axk minus lambda k less than 0 for all k greater than m. So this algorithm works. Well, let us further go ahead. The what is the numerical stability? So far we were confined ourselves to the convergence. And what happened to the stability of this algorithm? So, numerical stability of the inverse iteration at first sight, the inverse iteration procedures seems dangerous. Because the way which you are talking, simply take the inverse and do the same process in order instead of getting the dominant eigenvalue, you get the smallest. But this is not always desirable because sigma is near lambda 1, then the matrix A minus sigma is obviously the computed approximation of the vector. So, A minus lambda, the A minus sigma of 5. Now, how it is difficult? Let us see this example. Choose the matrix 3 by 3 and same initial vector. Sigma 1 is 9, then x1 I computed, x1 cap I normalized, so I do get this value. Similarly, when I compute for k is equal to 2, I do get this value. So, similarly, I do normalize, I do end up with this value. Similarly, for k is equal to 3, I do this, I end up with value k3. Similarly, k4, I do this, I do end up this value. So, the idea is, when you are doing iteratively, k is equal to 1, k is equal to 2, k is equal to 3, k is equal to 4. So, you see that here, 8, 9, 7, 4, 1.1722. So, the value is remains same in either cases. So, there is an improvement over here. Right? So, therefore, iteratively, when you are keep on doing, so there is a high chance that the method would get stabilized and you do get a stabilized solution. Well, when you are talking about the, the stability of the matrices, we also do get quite often across what is the Rayleigh coefficient. How do you define this Rayleigh coefficient? Let A be a symmetric matrix and let X be a reasonably good approximation to an eigenvector. So, X is the approximation to eigenvector. Then the quotient that is R of Q is nothing but sigma which I call it as X prime AX upon X prime of X is a good approximation to the eigenvalue of A for which X is the corresponding eigenvector. Right? So, what I wanted to see is the Rayleigh coefficient R Q, I do define it as X prime A X times of X transpose A X. If the matrix A is, I mean, if X is the orthogonal matrix, so you know very well X inverse is nothing but X transpose. That is very special cases. So, let us see how it can be proved. Since A is symmetric, there exists a set of orthogonal eigenvectors X1, X2, Xn. Therefore, we can write this as a linear combination of this vector x is equal to that is c1 v1, c2 v2, like that cn vn. These are all linear combination of these vectors. So, when I write this linear combination of these vectors, so you end up with x1 v1 is equal to i is equal to 1 to n or normalize it like this, then a v1 like this. So, you do get a sigma as sigma is equal to x transpose ax upon x transpose x. So, this is a linear combination. So, ultimately you do get like this. So, when I talk about this, the, the normalized eigenvector, so I do have lambda 1 c1 square, lambda 2 c2 square, lambda n cn square upon c1 square c2 square cn square. So, with this, we do get what we call the lambda of 1 is nothing but 1 plus, yes, lambda 2 by lambda 1 into c1. So, like this, like this you do get. So, therefore, the idea of the, the Rayleigh coefficient is, Rayleigh coefficient is x transpose x times x transpose is called the Rayleigh coefficient. This Rayleigh coefficient will help us in order to find out a, a stable solution. Let us see with simple example. Let the matrix A is equal to 2 by 2 matrix and x is equal to that is 2 by 1 matrix. Then the Rayleigh coefficient is simply you can compute x transpose ax and then x transpose of x you can compute. So, this is minus 3 is a good approximation to the eigenvalue. Point 
minus 0.2361. So in order to find out the best approximate eigenvalues, we use what you call the Rayleigh coefficient. Now, as I spoke, similarly, what is the strategy for finding the smallest eigenvalue? So one of the way which I spoke is, instead of having the matrix A, you can find out matrix inverse and then you handle in the same fashion the way which you use for dominant eigenvalue, it works. So let us see the compute the smallest eigenvalue in the matrix. The power method applied to A inverse gives the smallest eigenvalue of the magnitude, the least dominant one, that A be a non-singular matrix and eigenvalues of PRs are there. So instead of having the dominant eigenvalue, we can have a dominant smallest value so that we can apply the power method as it is, right? We do get the, the smallest eigenvalues. Well, we can note down few notations over here. Computing the smallest eigenvalue in magnitude, that is step, apply the power method of A to A inverse to compute the dominant eigenvalue of A inverse. Take the reciprocal of the eigenvalues obtained in step 1, so we can get the dominant eigenvalue. Let us start with the matrix A 3 by 3 and start this vector. Dominant eigenvalue, I already spoke, this is the value, so the smallest eigenvalue is this, so this is the matrix where you do get this. So that means, Whenever you are doing this smallest eigenvalue, we can get the dominant eigenvalue and vice versa by using this concept. Well, in continuation to that, the idea of approximating an eigenvalue of a symmetric matrix can be combined with the inverse iteration processor to compute successive approximations to an eigenvalue and the corresponding eigenvectors in an iterative fashion, so known as the Rayleigh coefficient. So, what is the algorithm? The matrix A should be a symmetric matrix. Matrix in number of permutations will be n. An initial approximation of x0 is the eigenvector so that we can able to find out the Rayleigh iteration technique. So, what is the algorithm for this? We start with an approximate pair and for k is equal to 1 to etc. 2, compute the lambda of ak. So, which is nothing but xk transpose axk upon xk transpose xk. Right? Solve and normalize this vector and stop if the pair xk is an acceptable eigenvalue of the matrix A and then end this matrix. Right? So that way you can do the this algorithm. So what are the remarks you can learn from this? As for choosing an eigenvector x0, perhaps the best thing is to do use the power method itself a few times and then use the last approximation as x0. That is the one observation we can make it. Rayleigh coefficient can also be defined in the non-symmetric matrices where one finds both the left and right inverse of A. But you see, in the case of non-symmetric matrices, there will be a difficulty because you need to have a left inverse and as well as right inverse. In each step, so k is equal to 1, you should do it, k is equal to you should do it, k is equal to 3, you should do it, like that you keep on doing. So it will be a cumbersome job. So let us see very simple example. I have a matrix, say 3 by 3 matrix and x0 is this. So the initial vector x obtained after three iterations of the power method I got it. For k is equal to 0, I do compute x, sigma naught, x naught ax. So I do get matrix. k is equal to, I do get this matrix. Similarly, if I use the like this, so the normal eigenvector I will get as this eigenvector, I do get it. So therefore, I do get as 0 0.3851, 0 0.5595, 0 0.7339. So like that, you could be able to get the eigenvalues of this matrix. So altogether, what we learned is the learned the iterative process of the the iterative process of the the Rayleigh coefficient, right? Rayleigh coefficient will be really very useful in order to find out the dominant eigenvalues and small eigenvalues of a matrix, right? Okay. So we today lecture we learned what are the articles in trying to find out the maximum or dominant eigenvalues and how do you find out the smallest eigenvalues. Then how do you stabilize the scheme ax is equal to lambda x by using the Rayleigh coefficient and its associated properties? I am sure all of you might have heard, might have learned, and uh, uh, we will meet in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you.